Thank you for having me here. It was mentioned earlier that data doesn't really matter. It's about information and insight. Completely agree. Let me also say that throughout the conference, I've heard the word big data seven times. That's fantastic. Previous conference, I heard it maybe once. It used to be social, 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 and now mobile, mobile, mobile. And today, you as a business leaders really need to know what big data is, but not as it means data per se, but what insight can you get from it. And hopefully we'll spend the next 12 minutes and just explore that. Let me first start by what is big data? There's a lot of definitions out there. People relatively new to the industry are making this up. Let me arm you so when you go back to your offices, you can tell what people, what big data is. Big data is data that's so large that it cannot be manipulated today by our current processes. That might mean terabytes of data in the cloud. It also might mean a PowerPoint presentation that's over 10 megabytes that you can't actually email through the internet. So there's lots of definitions. One thing that we've done in the industry, though, I think, is netted out on the three Vs of big data, volume, velocity, and variety. At Inrix, we're traffic geeks. Not website traffic, but roadway traffic. As you saw in the synopsis, we have over 100 million vehicles giving us anonymous GPS data. That's big volume. Velocity, it comes at us every 15 seconds. If you have a high-end Audi or BMW or Toyota, you're anonymously sending us your speed data because we don't care that it's Stefan going down the I-90 at two miles an hour. We care it's a data point going down there two miles an hour. And variety. We get data from cars, we get it from road sensors, we get it from cellular networks, we get it from mobile apps and the like. So what does Inrix do for a business? We try to solve this problem. We have a $122 billion problem in America. $121 billion problem of wasted time in congestion unnecessarily. A billion of us on the planet go to work and home every day and we're stuck in traffic and have frustration. That generates 2.9 billion gallons of wasted fuel and 4.8 billion hours of wasted time that we as human beings won't capture. If you're like me, I try to inspire my kids with this line. There have been 17 billion lives that have been lived. Please make yours count. And you can't make it count often when you're sitting in traffic frustrated or someone said honking the horn, which doesn't really help as well. So that's the business that we're in and we're trying to help. What does it look like to have 100 million vehicles actually giving you anonymous GPS data? That's trillions of data points, terabytes of data in the cloud. And here is just an example of one 15 second shot of what it looks like in North America. And you can probably find your favorite city in terms of what the data looks like. Besides just GPS data, we have to explain the why of traffic. And we do that by tracking school holidays, bank holidays, venues. What we've realized is for major sporting games, if there's a venue with more than 5,000 people, it's usually traffic influencing. So we track all the NFL games, the hockey games, football games, shareholder annual meetings, construction, cameras, accidents, so that we really know the why of roadway traffic. That comes into the variety. And we track over 500 different sources of this. What does this all mean for us in the traffic business? Again, not the website traffic. You're trying to drive traffic. We're trying to help the world avoid traffic. We have this funny joke at our office, which is Inrix, guaranteed satisfaction or double your traffic back. Well, clearly you don't want your traffic back, but we can do some pretty interesting things. And I want to touch quickly on four insights that we can get from some of this big data. And I thought the first three had nothing to do with real estate, but they actually do, and I'll touch a little bit to bring more at home. But billboard measurements, I see our friends from Houston are here, and I understand, I've learned this week that they often use billboards in your real estate strategy. We'll talk about economic forecasting, travel times, and then I'll give you a little bit of insight, I think, in terms of where the real estate industry is going. Show of hands, how many people have actually bought a billboard before? Well, it's one of the most frustrating experiences you can be involved in, in terms of measurement. Of all the major media, it's the only one that's not measured by an outside entity. And it's very frustrating to buy a billboard and realize that you get charged the same at Sunday at 2 in the morning as Friday at 5 p.m. You get charged the same amount for people driving to the office as those coming home from office. Let me just say that again. 
We all know that the trip to the office is not a very valuable trip because you might stop for McDonald's or Starbucks, but that's about it. The trip home is a very valuable trip because that's where you do most of your consuming. Whether you're stopping at Walmart or stopping at Big Five Sports or wherever you're stopping, you're typically consuming after work. It's a much more valuable trip. The billboards that you see on the way home should be priced much higher than those that you go to work. That's not true today. It's based on 2006 technology. The data that you get from 100 million vehicles can help solve this problem and make it more personal and relevant to you as an advertiser, but also us as consumers. Because at the end of the day, we want relevant advertising. Nobody wants unrelevant advertising or irrelevant advertising. We want relative advertising to us. So we'll be working with the billboard business. It's called the out-of-home business in terms of making that real-time, in terms of understanding not, how many, not only how many cars are going by the, the signs, but in every 15-minute segment. And as we move into digital boards of society, making it much more fun and exciting for you to actually know what's going on in your town. Economic forecasting. Traffic and economic forecasting are phenomenal. It's a direct, indirect correlation. The worse the traffic in your city, usually the better the economy. And great news, for the last three months, traffic has gotten worse in your city. <laughs> here are, what we're showing here, it's hard to read, are we have an index gridlock index, and this is a month, year-over-year -year change of the traffic across the United States. And you can see in February, traffic got worse by 9.8%. The first thing you do when you get a job is you don't buy a new house. You don't buy a new car. You don't buy a new fridge. You drive to work, and we can track this on a daily basis. And therefore, we see the traffic usually in your city getting better and better or worse or worse, which means the economy gets getting better and better. Yes, you have to factor out the price of fuel, and there's some weather overlays, but it's a pretty direct correlation. And that's one thing that might be helping. In your economic area, Here's an example of Los Angeles. Ignore the top lines. That's sort of the curves of Monday th through Saturday in terms of uh, your drive times and how that works. But focus on the red box that we've got there. The purple line is 2013. Sorry, this is a bit of an eye chart. You'll see that traffic in LA has gotten worse three months in a row, which means the economy has typically gotten better and better. Now, for those of you in the traffic business, you might not be. LA wrestles Honolulu and New York every month to be the worst traffic city in the United States. And what the index is on the left-hand side here is nearly 30, which means 30% of the time you're in LA, you're unnecessarily stuck in traffic. 30, for those of you non-LA, you might be happy. 30% of the time, even on Sunday, that bottom purple line at the top, they have traffic congestion. I'll give you the URL. I didn't put it on the slide. I apologize. You want to write it down real quick. Scorecard.inrix.com scorecard.inrix.com. We publish this across 100 top cities in the United States and in Canada every month. We often get mayors and governors in trouble, but the truth shall set you free. Okay? And we track all this because people want to know what's going on in my local economy. Scorecard.inrix.com. You can check it out for yourself in terms of forecasting. The third trend we see is the conversion of miles to minutes. Most of us run our lives on these personal intimate devices called cell phones. And our calendars are run on minutes, not miles. Think about it for a second. You don't phone your spouse and say, honey, I'm 17 miles from you. You say, I'm 23 minutes from you. And we run our lives on our calendars. There are some really cool applications. For example, you know our cars are moving towards traffic influencing navigation. That's the business we're in because we license traffic to Audi and Ford and BMW. But traffic influence calendaring. So for example, if you ask me tomorrow, what's the best time to leave to McCarran Airport, I can tell you right now it takes 36 minutes and the best time to leave is at 1235 to get to the airport. Those are common use cases. What's the best time to me to leave to get to the airport? Measured in times, not miles. And it's not just people, it's gonna be applications like how many minutes is my pizza from me? How many minutes am I from the daycare? For those of you young children, you get charged now $3 a minute in a lot of cities every time you're late. They really care where you are. Here are some examples of power things that we power, excuse me, signs that we power. Travel times. You can't do travel time signs on freeways unless you know real-time traffic. And it's very helpful. Even uh, electronic vehicles, for those of you who've got an electronic vehicle, when you run out of fuel, it's really bad. When you run out of gas, you get a jerry can, you hitchhike your ride, you get your, your, your gas and come back. When you run out of fuel with an electronic vehicle, you get a tow truck. 
and it takes three hours to charge, not 10 minutes to fill up with gas. So you never want on a run of fuel. You need to know how many miles, no, excuse me, how many minutes you are from gas stations. All right, and there's some other applications. What does this mean for real estate? 73%. Who knows what that number means? I'll tell you. 73% of people consider drive time to work as a key decision criteria in buying a new home. 73%, this is a NAR survey, over 5,000 people participated. 73% of your customers or your users or buyers consider drive time to work a key decision criteria. And talk about speed, I should just back up. So we're coming to the real estate industry. We measure everything at real, uh, excuse me, at INRIX in days and weeks. I don't think we have a schedule that uses the M or Q words, months or quarters. Everything's with D's and W's, days and weeks. I got invited by Greg Larson, thank you very much, to go down to the Clarion event on March 1st. On March 12th, Windermere launched this service across 10 states in the US. And yesterday, Real Estate Digital launched it with numerous of their customers. And here is Home Seekers and their implementation of Inrix drive time, which is the actual drive time that you can see based on real data from prospective homes to your offices. Now, here's the ironic part about this. You've got massive 100 million drivers to cause personalization. Until the launch of this feature, every home had roughly the same attributes, independent of buyer. Number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, school district, criminal record, whatever the case might be. Those were all independent no matter who looked at it. As soon as I, as a buyer, add my work address, in this case I chose USC as a professor, the attributes of this home become much more attractive or unattractive to me. The second thing that has happened in this chart, you can see the drive time throughout the day, which if I have the luxury of starting work at 10 o'clock in the morning versus 9, it really changes. So this is Real Estate Digital's implementation. They've done a great job. Uh, they literally started later when we're next to the market in terms of what Home Seekers is doing. And that's the marketplace today. Let, in the last few seconds, let me tell you where the future is going. Filtered search, where you can go to a website and say, show me all the houses between X price and Y price that's within 35 minutes of my office, and you can actually have it as a filtered search. I'm here, the rest of the conference, but here are just four examples of billboards, economic forecasting, travel times, and real estate, because you can really turn big data into big insight inside your company to create fantastic personalized experiences. Thank you, I look forward to talking to you all.